the bets that are being made that the market is going to go down is enormous. I mean, the volume that's being placed is something like we haven't seen ever before. And that's not an exaggeration. The volume now compared to 2008 was at one stage, the last time I looked, over three times more. Uh, the debt crisis is here, guys. Our bank's going to wimp out versus inflation. MC, would love to get your take on this. Yeah, thank you so much for having me and always enjoy our conversations. Yeah, for any investor, regardless of what asset class you're invested in or even what niche you're invested in, you do have to have an understanding of debt markets, how they work, and why they're so important because we're essentially in a, a debt-based monetary system. And for anyone that's been paying attention is countries around the world and their central banks have racked up debts to the amounts which we never thought we would see in our lifetimes. We really have to look daily just to see the, the debt that the U.S. government has racked up here in the United States. And it's, it's just enormous. It's over $30 trillion. And we're not even talking about unfunded liabilities right now, which um, could add a substantially huge amount, trillions and trillions more to, to, the, to the U.S. debt. What is very important to understand about debt right now for investors is essentially a lot of the debt that has been created ends up in retirement funds, right? Whether And, and more specifically, a lot of pensions. So uh, uh, this a crazy amount of government debt that's been issued is essentially then sold to pension funds, whether it be public or private. And then what is very important to understand about debt in general is the goal of holding some of that debt, especially for pension funds, is to essentially buy an income stream, you know, as part of the income that it needs to generate to make good on the promises that it, it's made to all of the pensioners and future pensioners. So I'll give folks a quick example of why there's such a crisis right now, especially with interest rates brewing. So let's just say you have $100,000, right, in debt. $100,000 in debt, and let's just say that debt, that note, pays you 1%. So that $100,000 would essentially give you an income stream of $1,000. Now, let's just say hypothetically, uh, because the environment demands it, that interest rates go up, let's just say 1%, just 1% to 2%. Now, all of a sudden, what, it, is, what has just happened, because remember that $100,000 um, generated an income stream of $1,000 for you. Well, now $50,000 at 2% can generate that same income stream for you. So what essentially just happened is that you cut the value of that note, of that, that bond, that debt in half. Now think about it, folks. You know, interest rates have gone up significantly since the beginning of the year all over the world you know if you bring this in it's like into real estate we've seen like the fixed 30 year uh, rate just in the united states what went from two and a half to like around about seven we just crossed over seven right <laughs> in a very short amount of time so what has happened is a lot of the folks that that hold this debt all of a sudden uh have lost I mean, 70, 80, 90% of the value of the debt, which they held. And by the way, when something is not scarce and there's plenty of it, it's not that valuable anymore, right? So the same thing, you know, economics 101 applies to debt. When the entire world is filled with it, it's not really that valuable in the first place. And now because of the interest rates going up, a lot of the, the, the debt holders are getting hammered. This is a massive moment in what I believe is, is, is a bigger crisis unfolding. This has resulted essentially that the public and private pensions in the United Kingdom needed to be bailed out last um, week by the Bank of England, their version of the Federal Reserve Bank. So essentially, a central bank had to step in and bail out these pension plans. Um, and if you look at what is happening uh, with central banks around the world, they're in a big, big uh, challenging position because inflation is running rampant. You're in the US, it's, we all know it's running rampant. And, and we will look at numbers, which is presented to us, that's not even double digit. In countries like the Netherlands, they're already telling them it's 
That's what the government's telling their citizens. So can you imagine what the real rate of inflation there is? Um, so it's very, very high in the UK too. So central banks are kind of trapped. They're going to try let's and try. raise rates. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, let's let's dive into the UK real, real quick. We're using that as kind of a prime example right now. And we kind of talked offline about, look, this is not a third world country here, guys. It's having, you know, this economic meltdown. I mean, the UK just launched, a, you know, an emergency easing program to buy, um, you know, to, to buy the government bonds right now. Do you want to speak a little about that? I mean, you've got really in-depth knowledge in the UK and in Europe in general. What's the feeling? What's the general vibe on uh, over there right now? I mean, is it absolute panic right now? It's panicking. We're not seeing a lot of that here in the U.S. Though we're not hearing a lot about it. No, because essentially your central bank is now the the buyer of last resort. Mm -hmm. you know? It's the well, seller and the fast. buyer, and essentially it's underwriting bonds because it's the main buyer. You know, um, to put this into a perspective for newer investors, right? Let's just say on the stock market, Amazon gets crushed and the stock dives. There's bids. There's people coming in and buying it whether it's institutions or whether it's private investors, because there's institutions and private investors that still feel that Amazon stock is valuable. It dipped down. I'm going to put a bid in. There's, there's no bids for, for the debt, for the bonds in the UK that the central bank literally, which is the Bank of England, had to, had to step in. So they're basically underwriting bonds right now. They're the, the, the seller and the buyer of lost resorts. Here's why um, this, is, this is very important. This is going to make its way across Europe. Um, this is, you know, in, in, in my worldview and opinion, this is just the first kind of domino that we're going to see with, uh, with the crash in, in, in the debt market. This is going to run right through Europe because most of them are no better off than the UK. Um, and eventually this will uh, find its way to other parts of the world. And it's going to end up in the United States where you're going to see similar things. Um, they, I mean, there's already talks with, with the Federal Reserve of, and even the US government of what are we going to do with all these promises that we make? Because that's essentially what a pension is, mm -hmm. whether it's a a public one, which is, you know, uh, whether federal or state or local, uh, local government, uh, or uh, whether it's a private one, you know, uh, private corporations, which some of them have them already, right? Most of them have kind of switched away um, from, uh, from private pensions to, the, you know, the, the retirement plans that we now know, the 401ks and the IRA and so forth. But this is huge. And this is going to have a very big impact across the world for investors because the debt market is enormous. It dwarfs mm -hmm. any other market. Um, so regardless of, of the asset class that you're in and the, the niche that you're investing in, this is going to impact you as an investor. There's no way to hide from this. Absolutely. So we, we touched on the debt market right there. Let's touch on the, the stock market. You know, many people are anticipating about a 40 percent uh, drop in the stock market here as stagflation hits uh, really an over leveraged global economy. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. So what's interesting about the markets is um, when you, I look at capital flows and folks in my network and some of the communities that I'm involved in, um, follow capital flows very, very closely. They also look at shorts in markets. You know, for, for newer investors and, and newer viewers, um, when, uh, when you're essentially shorting a stock market is essentially a bet and you could do it through options. I know that there's some ETFs, but it's mostly done through huge institutions through options, where essentially you can purchase an option, a put option, betting that the market is essentially going to go down. And what has happened in the past week is that the, the bets that are being made that the market is going to go down is enormous. I mean, the volume that's being placed is something like we haven't seen ever before. Um, and that's not an exaggeration. In 2008, um, the, the volume now compared to 2008 was at one stage, the last time I looked, over three times more. And for folks that, that that wasn't closely following markets in 2008, watch the movie The Big Short. Uh, that'll bring you up to speed that a lot of the insiders knew what was going on. There was a lot of folks that were essentially shorting uh, different financial instruments at that point because they know <laughs> the, the inside money, the, the, the inside players knew that this was coming, coming to crash down. 
The same thing's kind of happening now. Uh, where mm-hmm. there's a lot of folks betting that the markets are going down. So if you look at capital flows and you look at positioning of the biggest institutions, it looks like the money that's in the know, the smart money, as they call it, are all positioning for something big. Uh, and that ties into a lot of very other interesting stories, uh, which <laughs> which I'm sure we're going to get into uh, that's happening uh, at the same time. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to dive into, you know, some of those today. So something definitely big is brewing. Um, You know, all the tea leaves are out there. You know, folks that are in the know, the smart money, as we call them, are obviously, uh, you know, they're putting their money where they believe the market is going to head and where it appears to be trending right now. Uh, Let's talk about the inflation, you know, uh, versus the the Fed rate hikes right now. So recently we had a 75 BP hike. Jerome Powell definitely, uh, when watching that, uh, has, has really changed his, his tone, you know, a couple months ago, he was talking about uh, the Fed being able to, you know, bump these these rates up and really uh, tame inflation. They thought they were going to be able to get it back under control. The tone has completely shifted at this point. You know, they thought they were going to be able to do uh, really tame inflation without having the, you know, the huge economic downturn or ultimately crushing the economy. At this point, they don't sound so confident. What was your read on that? I and mean, they're talking about, you know, at least another 75, maybe two more rate hikes by the end of 2022. Yeah, there. it looks like they are very clear that the rate hikes are going to continue. Um, and just from kind of like looking at, at body language, because that always gives gives it away, right? When they're, Every time. <laughs> when they're speaking, it looks like they know that the genie's out of the bottle with inflation. Mm-hmm. Um, and at this stage, we're getting the, the worst of both sides. So um, for for folks that that are operating in the economy, I mean, the the prices of everything has gone up, right? Because the essentially the supply destruction, right? There's still a demand. There's a supply destruction, uh, even with interest rate r- raising. Everybody's seeing that we still have price inflation, and it's very very tough to combat it, especially as more and more goods and services get get destroyed. So there's less of it. Um, same amount or, or even more uh, money chasing it around. Um, and there's still a huge demand for it. Um, and then with assets, as we just mentioned, there's a massive deflationary event in the debt market happening uh, with interest rates going up. There's a massive deflationary event when it comes to, for example, the real estate market, where mm-hmm. if you see such a spike in, in interest rates and, and, and in mortgages, all of a sudden, you know, using that example that I mentioned earlier on the debt example where, The goal is to buy an income stream, right? Essentially that $100,000 at 1% bought you $1,000 of of income. Now, all of a sudden, uh, the rate goes up to 2%. Now, $50,000 can buy you that exact same uh, uh, income stream of of Um, $1,000. With real estate, it it works similar in the sense of affordability, where, where at a certain interest rates, things are very affordable and still priced. Um according to the the market conditions. But when interest rates go up, the prices have to come down for the same amount of buyers to be able to buy it. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Now, um, I don't want to take a paintbrush and, and, and just brush the entire real estate market of the United States with the exact same brush because there's many different factors um, involved in, and every single real estate market is, is different. So some real estate markets still have a massive demand. There's a lot of cash buyers at certain price points going in there. But in other areas, there are folks that are putting down 5, 10, you know, 20, 25%, and they're trying to, to get a mortgage essentially to acquire property. It's going to look a little bit different in the markets where, um, the majority of the purchases are funded with with mortgages versus the outright the outright cash buyers. There's been a quote recently by Jeremy Siegel. He's a professor at, at the Wharton School of Economics, and he um, he went on record and said that, in his opinion, Jerome, Jerome Powell and the Fed have made the two largest mistakes in the history of the Fed. One being the first one last year when they were too soft on inflation, really did nothing about it, and now here we are in 2022, and they think that it's too tight. Uh, or he personally thinks that it's way too tight. Do you have thoughts on that? I mean, that's a pretty extreme thing to say about the Fed that's been around as long as it has for that to say. Those are the two biggest mistakes, obviously, really the same mistake, just at opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah, so um, we we as investors have to be very cogniz- cognizant of the information and the data 
uh, that we that we consume essentially, right, or <laughs> that we digest. Um, and we have to be cognizant that there's a narrative out there on me in the media world, mainstream, right? They're trying to reassure everyone that everything is okay because the interests are all aligned to get that message out there. Now, if you in, invest in certain data sources, you know, one uh, data source that I use is uh, Shadow Stats, where um, John Williams actually runs the numbers uh, before, <laughs> before the data got tortured, you know, in, in the, the 90s, I always joke and say, when you torture data enough, it confesses. So he gives you the untortured data. And when you look at that data, every single data point tells you that the economy is slowing <coughs> down big time. We are already in a recession, regardless <laughs> what the, the latest Definite, definition The definition's been changed, though. You didn't, you didn't hear <laughs> You know? Yeah, they changed the definition of a recession. Then they changed the definition of the concept and term of a definition on Wikipedia, I saw it too. Uh, yeah. Quite bizarre times that we live in. But essentially for investors, it's very important to, to, to find the right information. You know, folks always ask me, how do I find it? You, you have to pay for it. Um, mm -hmm. And it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg but there are subscriptions that you would need to find the, the accurate data that you would actually need because the decisions that you're going to make is only going to be as good as the data and information on which it's based on. So, um, yeah, so they know the genie's out of the bottle. Um, they understand that the economy is coming down, but they're, I mean, at this stage, you know, they're caught between a rock and a hard place. They're trying to fight inflation, um, which, I think, ju judging by their body language, that they don't think that they can stop it. Um, but they're now tightening, essentially, in a slowing economy. And this is going to have a lot of uh, d deflationary consequences as a result. So it's important for investors to be aware of that. Yeah, let's talk about that. You brought up narrative. And, and that's really important because there's so much information out there. There's so much white noise, there's so many news sources out there. I mean, you can get on Google and, and search the same topic and, and find you know, tons of information on it. I always follow the data. You like the data sources as well. You know, data doesn't lie. Data drives most of my personal business decisions. Um, but that narrative out there, that's that's frightening because people that don't necessarily have the right resources or you know, maybe a, the right mentor in their life uh, you know, are and oftentimes going to come up really short because they're not going to have an accurate picture of what the market is looking like or what the market, more importantly, is going to be doing and what those trends look like so you can get ahead of them as an investor and ultimately be part of that smart money. There is a ton of money to be made right now. So, you know, this is not a doom and gloom. This is just a reality check video. Look, here is what's going on. Everyone go out there and do your own due diligence research, obviously, but there are a lot of ways to make money. It's no time to get cute, you know, so don't go it alone. Get, get with an expert. Obviously, do tons of research. You know, guys like MC and his team can really help folks out that are, that are maybe looking for some direction if you're interested in you know a lot of the things that they offer you go to email ninja at vip financial education.com that's ninja at vip financial education.com include your first name your last name the best number to reach you at and vip conversation in the subject line and someone from mc's team will get back in touch with you right away to see if it's a good fit they've got tons of guidance and very structured programs that may or may not be a good fit uh, but it doesn't hurt to certainly reach out and uh, and see for yourself with so much going on right now having that guidance uh, and or mentorship, uh, whether it's MC and his team or someone else is of the utmost importance in order to really capitalize on what's going on right now. You know, a very, very important thing that I have to remind myself daily is, you know, because really think about it. There's a lot going on. If you're an investor in this environment, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of different narratives. Um, we are living in an environment where people are fighting for attention and your attention every single day, right? Um, so, and it's also a time where massive change is happening very quickly, very rapidly, um, massive disruption. Uh, there's chaos in, in many parts of the world already, and there's been chaos uh, in, in the United States already. So what I try to remind myself as an investor every single day is I just try to center myself and try to figure out through the data sources that I pay for, what are the facts? Because the facts are so different than feelings. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially 
what narratives that come that in these narratives, they're, they're driven by agendas, right? So you have all these narratives out there that's trying to capture your attention and make you feel a certain way. So what I've learned on my journey as, as an investor too, that every single time I move over to the feeling side, except uh, away from the facts, I get in trouble and I make bad decisions. So it's very important during this time, especially to ask yourself when you're, when you're con- just digesting uh, data and information, is this facts or are these, is this a narrative that's trying to drive a feeling of mine, right? And it, it's very interesting because, and folks would say, really? Uh, facts versus feelings? That's not very enlightening, MC. That's kind of just common sense. But no, we hear about the market sentiment every single day. And mm. the market is made <laughs> consists out of people and essentially how they feel drives the sentiment of the market. So as an investor, f- by focusing on the facts and not on the feelings which drive the sentiment, you're going to be able to position yourself uh, to capitalize on the incredible amount of opportunities that's available there. Because to your point, the opportunities that's available today for folks to capitalize on is quite incredible. Yeah, and I just saw an article the other day or a stat the other day. Within the next five years, and with even with all this economic turmoil globally, within the next five years, the number of global millionaires is going to double. So that just goes to show you right there where people that are actually out making moves, they're getting involved, they're in the know and they're taking action. Those are the people that are going to be making a lot of money. Same thing with post-08. You know, people made a ton of, there was generational wealth made back then. It's going to be the same thing now if you know what you're doing. So guys, if you're watching this and you want to get prepared for retirement, for example, you want to start doing, making really sound financial decisions uh, that could lead towards retirement, reach out to MC and his team. They've got really a, just a suite of products that uh, and advice that they can give you guys to help navigate trying times like this. Again, we always say this is no time to get you, get an expert uh, in investing or in whatever particular investment class you're looking to get involved in, get a mentor, get a coach, get someone that has been down this road before because there's opportunities to make a lot of money if you know what you're doing or if you're doing it with someone that does know what they're doing. So if you want to talk to MC and his team, go ahead and email ninja at vipfinancialeducation.com. Be sure to include your first, your last name, the best number to reach you and VIP conversation of the subject line. Someone from MC or his team will get back in touch with you ASAP to see, uh, answer any questions first and foremost and see if it's a good fit. They may be able to help you uh, really navigate these troubled waters right now. So it's definitely worth reaching out. Uh, go ahead and drop that thumbs up below. That helps out our algorithms. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe and ding that bell. As always, thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the next episode.